ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to your Smite Console League relegation coverage. My name's F. Dot, joined here by my man's Hindu man. We're going to get into it. Kingdom, they're looking to bounce back after getting, well, they kind of got trounced. I mean, we say trounced, but it was mainly objective control again. We said that about them all last LC SCL as well, that just objective control was their biggest letdown. Yeah, it was a little troublesome, but they'll be going into this next one against Noble, a team that uh, struggled as well during the regular season. So well, two of our uh, already in the Smite Console League teams battling it out. Kingdom need at least one point here to stay in contention. Then they're going to have to rely on results elsewhere to still have a shot, unless they can 2-0. And then it, well, it's all up to Noble then to have to try and find wins to stay in it themselves as well so kingdom versus noble this one we'll take a look at where kingdom winds up like you said objective control is what they're looking for and they'll try to fix that as they head into the second one but before we get into it don't forget there are things you can do at home as well louisiana is in some trouble and each of us can do our parts to help everybody out if you roll the chest of, uh from now between well the end of the day high res is going to donate two dollars to the american red cross for every single roll today's the last day so definitely get your rolls in i believe there's also a artemis skin in that chest as well i saw yesterday i can't remember what the other skin is but i saw an artemis one that goes along with that yeah a lot of good stuff in that and skin her, and of course uh, for, for you know for me it's all about the charity and stuff but good skins abound as well kingdom versus noble However, we've seen them in the regular season when, I don't want to say there's nothing on the line, but there's a little bit more on the line. Well, we see as well, I mean, Noble Kingdom, they were the two teams that came down from relegations here to fight. They're only up against the Los Amigos who won that 2-0 there. But I mean, well, basically with how this is going to be play out now, two teams going to the Pro League, one team back to the challenges. It's going to be rough. We'll see who winds up there. Los Amigos, I, I, I said it when we saw them play through the Challenger Cup Finals. You mentioned it today said, before broadcast, as you said, you felt they were hot. I said, I said it. I, that team, Los Amigos, I have a lot of faith in. Kingdom and Noble, we've seen them play already. I think it's going to be one of these guys that unfortunately sits home. So this match is one of the more important and perhaps one of the more exciting ones. And with that in mind, Susana will be banned out by Kingdom, and Noble will take Nemesis off of the board. Saw some interesting strategies out of Kingdom so far today. I mean, Hebo in the Hunter role is one of the things that we saw out of this team. At the same time, they also did draft a Soul multiple times as well. So we'll see how this works out for them. I wouldn't mind seeing them go back to maybe this knock-up strategy that they went with, with the Vulcan, with the Hebo, and then the Athena taunts. Sure. It was a valid option. It just didn't work out that game. That's very, very true. And, you know, the, the Hebo is interesting. I I was rooting for Hebo anywhere but Gosh, the long lane. Really? Anywhere I mean, but the you, long lane. When you saw I expected Vulcan was going to be in the long lane. More sure. often than not, we've seen it in the old days. But it seemed they wanted to try to help. I actually thought we were going to see Hebo solo. But in any event, not the case. <laughs> Guan Yu, the first pick overall. And this is a very strong pick. So much so that he's, on the console side at least, very comfortable in that first I pick I like role. Kingdom's strategy there as well. I mean, they ban Susano and Ao Kuang, right? And they get the opportunity to take something away. The, going with the Guan Yu over a Fafnir is the biggest one here. And sure. the fact Fafnir has still not been drafted is the other unusual subject. To talk well, about. I expect it to be drafted here okay. next to the Freya. And there it will be. Freya and Fafnir, two of the scarier combinations with that support uh, together. Of course, yep. Fafnir amplifying attack speed and Freya she wants all of it not only that but the hammer shredding protections as well sets Freya up for some free damage off that even the whoop into a hammer is guaranteed as well for the most sure. part in the early stages Thorin back as though for the side of Kingdom nice little rounded composition so far yeah Kingdom Esports have a very classical composition looking like Guan Yu likely to head his way into the solo lane of course can be a little flex into the jungle but less likely Noble Esports on the other hand more 2016. Fafnir is showing up. That's going to be the Freya in the hunter position, most likely, and Giannis repping the mid lane. So, because of that, Noble Esports are going to go ahead and ban out the Soul and the Raijin. Well, Noble done the homework there, banning the Soul away. We saw Soul played multiple times by Kingdom already. Today's Raijin just to go and take it off the table, especially for when sure. you see there's three physical, well, two physicals already lined up for them. They're going to need some sort of magical burst to go along that backers. Makes sense. I wonder where we'll see those, that, those choices go. For Kingdom, However, Kingdom don't want to play against Odin or Arlong Shen. So they might have a couple of thoughts in their mind as they want to pick the Vulcan. And one more selection will likely be their Hunter. And the Hunter last time, well, the game won against the boys of Los Amigos. They went with Hobwar. They could look to run that one back again if they so choose. But I wouldn't mm. mind seeing just a physical Hunter this time. It's possible. I mean, right now you already have, well, it's two and two as far as the magical and, and yeah. physical is balanced. So maybe you see the Hobwa again. Oh, Who knows? probably. No, It'll be the Shibalake. Okay. Shibalaki, a character that we have seen disappear on PC for the most part, but in console, still strong, especially anytime you got Transonics in your league, you're always going to have Shibalaki on, on the board. I mean, Darkest and Nice is one of those abilities that may be overlooked. It doesn't 
provide a lot, but he provides everything at the same time. Vision is sure. such a big key to a team. You're very limited in what you can actually do to follow up with things. Like a yards can ult across the map, fine. But if it's dark outside, you can't really see where you're going. Very true. And, you know, Darkest of Nights is one of my favorite abilities in the game. I think that it has a lot to do... Rob Blind is mine. Uh, Rob Blind? Mm -hmm. And same sort of thing. And exactly, it's the same sort of thing. So much about Smite is about keeping everything in control, uh, not only just aiming your character, mm -hmm. but also more importantly, seeing the rotation, seeing the people come from left and right out of your peripheral vision. And Shibalaki shuts that down. Shibalaki's ultimate is just as good as the initiating force as many of our other options. So we'll see how the Bacchus Leap combines with turning off the lights from Shibalaki. But in any event, we're getting on board. Noble Esports. They'll look to bounce back as they head against Kingdom. Noble vs. Noble is, is about <laughs> this way right now. But Noble Esports for their team, just so you guys at home know, they're going to be on the right, sorry, the right-hand side of the UI, the red team starting from the Chaos side. And they've got a couple of different changes coming out here between these two teams as well. I mean, we've got Lou still in the AD carry role, Red Daily Dale with him, Yo-Yo ABC in the jungle position, you got Super in mid, and Red Ripper in solo. Yeah, pretty standard as the lineup as we uh, have come to expect from the regular season. Mm -hmm. And their opposition, why don't you lay those out for us today? Well, those guys as well, I mean, obviously on the side of Kingdom we saw them earlier on, Despair ripping holes in the support role, Jumper in the jungle, who had a pretty good set for himself. We did see Truancy in the mid lane as well, played a bit of Vulcan earlier mm -hmm. on, which he had a pretty good set on that. And Ni Niqued in the so I, yes. his name right. I, I change it every single time I cast him. I don't know why. <laughs> Nick Wid. He was actually uh, he was having some fun casting the um, the Challenger Cup a little bit of stuff. The the console league ca Challenger Cup. So Nick Wid, he streams. He well, streams he, he a bit know, here. There. He should know Amigos then, if that's the case. Absolutely. We ran into the Amigos earlier on today, but here we go. Kingdom versus Noble. So these guys oh, start it. Started. Ooh, the invade on the right side. Not quite oh, regular. Fafnir. Blue over there. Did on he the get it? Of course he did. Let's go scummy. The double invade. That's what's that's. Oh, what's I didn't fun. see the right hand side. I was looking at yep. the buff near there. The but double invade. That's what's fun. I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here talking about the blue buff. You see Fafnir over there on the left hand side. Both buffs go the way of Noble. Look at that. Look at that on the on the on your spectator UI. There's just no buff icons for the guys on Kingdom. That's just gotta feel bad. And it's not just that though, because if you look at the other side of the jungle, they've still got Speed Blue in their own side of the map on the right hand side. Have a Noble to go back and take. They've bullied them out in the duo lane there already, so they can even take the mid harpy the right-hand fire elementals, yep. or even the speed buff if they're feeling very, very fancy. The double wrath coming out. Now, this isn't the same double wrath that dominated Smite a couple of years ago. Uh, that was on the jungle and the solo lane. Now we see uh, now we see one on the jungle yep. and one on the support, which is a little bit more standard. And this is Noble coming in with a specific strategy to get themselves through this early game today. Obviously, these are very important for them. Going in the relegations fight, there's only two spots up at our grabs out of three. So why not use something that people aren't used to, which is invades. They Invades don't happen that often at the moment. Exactly. Just keep your opponent on their heels and keep them guessing. Uh, and just off of that invade alone, Noble find themselves already up about the same as the first blood. And look at this. Invade the speed buff as well. Just abuse the situation. They've still got their whole right hand side jungle of their own to still go and take. The experience is going to go through the roof. Well, Kingdom, Kingdom played the right side invade almost correctly. They saw that Noble were coming in with the Wrath and they just stepped away from their buff, knowing it wasn't going to go their way, and headed to lane. The problem is, you head to lane and then double back for your buffs. Noble, unfortunately, or Noble, fortunately for their fans, took advantage of the fact that Kingdom never doubled back for the speed buff. Yeah, and because of this as well, I mean, to put every single lane ahead, you can see the duo lane coming out from Kingdom here. Back is a little bit off the mark there, and the punishment that you can come out from a Fafnir and, Fa a Fafnir and Freya, so very <laughs> strong. They actually did get the shell out of them then as well just as the Wrath is about to come back up. Yeah, so a, a lot of attention being paid to these relics. You can take a look. The, uh, the Fafnir and the Fenrir both have their Wrath available. This is going to be tough. Fafnir, Fenrir, Freya. Freya. Good luck. All on the same team. Good luck, my friend. It could only get worse <laughs> if the mid laner was called Freya. His actual player name was Freya. That could have been worse. Well, maybe if Jungler was playing mid. No. <laughs> no, no, stop. Jungler playing mid, Freya not on Freya. Stop. Things can get complicated here in the commentary position. But for now, things staying relatively simple in the long lane here. Uh, the bacchus Shibalake uh, combination will theoretically um, push the Freya? 
I mean, they should do, but the way he's been, sorry, because of the fact they had their buff invaded, they were exactly. behind on experience, so they kind of lost the pressure there. We will see a level 5 spike in favor of Noble here, as they will hit level 5 earlier, and I want to see him trying to aggress on to things like this. And this is the play. Yo-Yo looking for the stun, misses it completely. Good dash coming out from the Guan Yu player, Nickwood. Just a little bit too quick. Don't think he needs to dash there. I think he was still out of danger, but obviously he could have still followed up with a Ragnarok in range so the dash did come through. So he heads back to mid lane one more time where Kingdom continues to farm up. And now that level five spike's gone through, a, the power play's kind of disappeared for a second. Daily. Now just, is he looking for the vision? But he's looking for the jump over. Okay, he's just going to jump over. Taking a little shortcut. This was more like at the red buff and trying to steal it away. But that's why you see so many members of Kingdom here collapsing to make sure the red buff is A, secured. But at the same time as being secured, it's also to make sure that they share the experience and try and catch up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, Kingdom Esports have barely had their own jungle available to them. Like I said earlier, Noble found themselves up by about a first blood. Now they're up a thousand gold. That's the second rotation of the blue buff that Nickwood has been denied. And this is very important. Nickwood is one of the stronger players on Kingdom Esports, in my opinion. And by just uh, dr keeping him dry, it's a drought there in the right lane. No blue buff available. It's going to hurt Guan. Oh, he's going to hurt Vulcan in the mid lane here, who's under pressure on his own now as well. They're not going to see the tower dive coming out from Fenrir, though, just yet. We did actually see the Thor go on to the mid lane of Giannis there, but at the same time, purification used, no follow-up of it. And, and that's the one of the issues, I guess. Hold that. There's a great Good double follow. bounce, and the follow-up Vulcan shot does a lot of damage, but nobody dies in the mid lane. However, solo kill, Nickwood falls down. No, no blue buff to his name. Sun Wukong I mean, gets the better of him. That doesn't surprise me in the solo lane. Look at the level difference. He's eight to five. It was just, he's just yep. hit six while dead there. And that's just because his buffs got invaded two times over. And it's been way too unfortunate for him to really do anything about it. Yeah, it's been really rough for the Guan Yu. You got to play a little bit safe, but at the same time, how safe is too safe, etc. Plus, we all know how adept the Sun Wukong is at diving the tower. Speed buff trying to be protected instead of ripping holes, getting abused a little bit. Here comes help from Kingdom Esports. One backfire. But at Not the end of the day, it. speed buff goes down. That was really good work again. I was going to mention ripping holes in the last little skirmish in the mid lane where he turns it around. But on the right hand side, Yo Yo did get caught there. Quite surprised to see that one as well. Did manage to get out of the danger zone. But shout out to the backers. Very important timing that the, that, the, that the dog goes down right there. Because the jungler is dead, Noble are able to wrap around and try, or Kingdom are able to wrap around and try to aggress onto the speed buff. Jumpa already has his successful defense on his own, and then we'll pick up the second one as well. So we'll take a look at the first blood one more time. Nickwid going down there on the right-hand side. And this was just level difference overall here. You can see, you know, he's under the tower. He comes out, Tiger Stance forces it, Archer's impact in two. And one Smack. more Jingo bang. Easy game, easy life. You know, right there, I, I almost expected that was going to be a, a big old tower dive with the Sun Wukong yep. decoy. That's what he's really good at. Uh, and, and that can be very troublesome when you're, hey, I'm playing really safe on the on the back of my tower, but Sun Wukong comes in anyway. That was just Nick would get beat. Unfortunately, Red Ripper just came out and cycled through the abilities and, and put him down. And the big thing about the ability, the levels was the difference because the abilities do a little bit more damage at base when you max them up and getting Tiger form a little bit further ahead there allows for that little bit more damage than you expect. And obviously Nick would come in out of tower range there to try and clear the minions and absorb the gold, cost him his life. And I, I like seeing that other players changing. Oh, I have, an, I have a, a fight coming up right now. I need to change my usual, whether it's build path or even leveling of the abilities. What was coming out? Good double tap there. Good follow up as well. Going to force Giannis out, but now Thor's out of position really here and going to get aggressed on. Yeah, gets stunned a little bit. Freya shows up, but a good body block out of despair saves the life of Thor. Different story. Now Freya's in a bad spot. Chased down and Yo Yo gets the kill. Despair ends up falling. Thor is in the sky right now. And the dragon with the portals coming through. They're looking for another pick. Perfect landing from the Thor. Gets two stuns, but again, the rotation from the solo lane pays off and Redder gets the kill. Yo-Yo trying to find the kill onto the jungler, can't, and now Agreston by the rotation out of the solo lane. Looking like Nickwood's gonna get his revenge, Hindu. There it is, the kill. He'll get his revenge, but it's very funny to see what Noble did there. We saw the jungler, Yo-Yo, being very disciplined and not diving the tower. We're gonna confirm the kill that would've got traded out, but then at the same time, you also see Red Ripper there yep. do exactly the opposite, die for the kill, and then get traded out himself. Yeah, a little bit of a... Uh... I don't want to say over-aggression because everything was answered correctly by the individual players. 
Uh, so that's not going to come up on either side pretty much. But the lead that Noble had secured early on by way of their heavy, heavy invade is still healthy. It's still there, but it could have been better. You know, you stop giving away kills, giving them a, a small opportunity for map advantage to get some of these camps back again. And then just keep pre applying this pressure. Yeah, you don't find the kill. You don't always have to find a kill, though, to make sure you get the advantage. See, for me, I, I don't even mind Noble trading out the kills uh, that they're doing because it's all sort of... We're ahead already, and the trading out kills winds up being the same. It was the invade that Kingdom successfully pulled off. They kill Yo-Yo very deep in the enemy jungle and then get the invade on the right side. That's problematic for Noble, but they're going to fix that situation by just aggressing on the Gold Fury. A lot of burst already. Only half HP left for the big guy. Jibalonke force it all there as well. Disengage. The Gold Fury goes down before anybody can respond on the side of Kingdom. Yeah, you can see Kingdom comes in with the rotation a little bit late. Uh, not even much zoning half to be done. Yo-Yo's going to trade out, but still worth it. Noble Esports picked up the early objective, taking it out, and then Yo-Yo, well, so far he's a sacrificial dog. I just want to see Kingdom do that more and more, because that was beautiful. That was just a very nice combination from Kingdom of ability uses yep. to secure a kill. There was nothing Fenrir could do in response there, even if he had his abilities up. Yeah, I mean, not really anything for Fenrir to do, but as I said, one trade for the Gold Fury. Got to be happy oh, about no, that. Oh, no, it's fine. But although Kingdom here could look towards the speed buff with this man advantage they've got for a moment or two with Fenrir coming back from base. Instead, though, they're just going to farm the right and the Harpies, try and answer back a little bit more of this experience. Yeah, there's nothing really. I mean, there's nothing that Kingdom can do outside of regular play at the moment. They can wait for the Gold Fury in a couple of minutes. Fire Giant, not an option this early in the game, even if it... Uh, like literally not an option, but even at 10 minutes, not going to be a feasible option. Uh, you could look for a gank, I guess, in the mid lane, but Fafnir's really set up camp over there. I think the approach is really going to have to look towards Freya and getting some early kills onto the ship along. That's a good point. I'm not too worried at the moment, though, from the side of Kingdom. I know, you know, at the same time, you just lost to the Los Amigos here, coming up against Noble, but I think with how it stands, they do have a Jabalonke here. He can go off in the late stages, just like Freya. He's going to get there a little bit later than normal, though. We always talk about Freya being the sort of the two to three item character, right? Boots, Fatalis. Here comes Yo-Yo looking for another gank. This is good pressure as well with the, the damage coming out there. He could have continued chasing if he wanted, but worried about the stun. But still, left hand side. Yeah, Kingdom's going to focus on this, Freya. Good call right up into the air. Goes to Freya after the counter gank coming out from the Thor. I like that call because look at the build path of the Shibalanke. We talk about Freya coming online with three-ish items. Shibalanke is starting the Transcendence second, which means those stacks are going to come on a little bit later, which means I mean, Shibalaki, in general, is going to be coming on a little bit later. You really need to protect Despair here. Yeah, the Bluestone Day is kind of, of old coming out from Despair on this hunt at this time round with the Bluestone start. But because of that, delaying the Transcendence means the power spikes a little bit later in the yeah. game, which shows that Kingdom are quite happy to... I guess that's also down to how the game's gone, too, that he's like, OK, I'll go Transcendence because we're going to have to take this one a bit later. Well, I mean, I, 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 the Transcendence in general on the Shibalaki is a good call. Look at this collapse coming out from Noble, though. They're going to come around two sides. Bacchus is just going to walk into the Freya. That's more damage than he anticipated. Good banish coming out as well, though, from Freya to get away. Luke gets out of danger. And the Ragnarok is actually going to pick up Thor and take him on a wild ride for a second, but Purification used Freya. And the Jingle banned from Red Ripple secure. Yeah, we mentioned three items is when Freya comes online, but two certainly good enough. The damage pumping through. Kingdom's going to answer back. Nickwood one on the left, and there's a kill for Red on the right. One more going the way of Kingdom as Despair picks up Yo-Yo. Crazy fights between these two teams. 5 to 5, 11 minutes in already. And you can see how even that fight really entailed between the two. Two members of each team died. Yeah, it was just a... It, I wouldn't even, you know, I wouldn't even call that a straight trade-out because there were two separate team fights going on. Very interesting calls coming out from the guys on both sides of Kingdom and Noble. Yo-Yo keeps dying, but he's not having a poor game. He's dying because he's setting his teammates up. Up. And this is sort of this is sort of a classic Fenrir play. Fenrir now has sort of become into this, I'll jump on you, I'll stun you, and I'm an assassin. But we used to know Fenrir as a setup guy. What I'm really happy about is though Nikwed getting those three kills has really helped out Kingdom. He's managed to catch up a little bit onto the Sun Wukong, still a little bit down, he gets some more experience from this wave here as he loses his tower. But you need to make sure he's able to still be on the front line and get the gold he needs to be that front line and give those convictions that are going to be very important for them. Absolutely. I mean, the guy's down a thousand gold and he's got no tower, but he also didn't have a blue buff for the first 10 minutes of the game. He got murdered twice in the right side before the game even really began. But at the same time, that's because of those situations, Quad's supposed to be down and out. 
Yep. He's a little bit down, and he's certainly not out. Good pressure then to Yo-Yo again. These left-hand harpies have spawned. Surprise King Mark looking at him already. And because he don't look at him for a second there, Noble are allowed to get in position. Yeah, and this is problems for Thor. The good slow coming out of Freya, bringing him all the way down oh, to half oh, or lower. Geez. That's enough for the kill if the ultimate comes out. One shot will be dodged, but the fourth won't. Two for two, and Lou looking great. Jumper just accepted everything that got thrown in and hammered a little bit too late. Not sure if it, I think it was on cooldown, actually, from the double tap attempt on Yo-Yo ABC. Well, that's what I was saying about the Bacchus as well last time when we saw the fight. These players are just taking the gumballs to the face. It's only 12 minutes, but Freya's already got the Fatalis of the Boots done and finished. She's already da dangerous at that point, especially she started the Soul Stone. Well, the funny thing is if Noble 2-0 this, they go through because they'll both be on three points with Los Amigos and Kingdom Esports. They'll go home. And now it's trouble for Kingdom Esports. Look all the damage coming out of Lou. Keep in mind the ultimate's on cooldown, and it doesn't matter because she's dead anyway. Truancy coming back in this world in spades, taking out the Freya. And you can see Jablonki fighting three there, and they didn't commit onto him. Instead, they backed away as in mid lane, the two will hold and continue to pressure on. Yeah, a big part of uh, what's how, as we move to the mid game, right? Uh, Noble found themselves up a lot thanks to their early game invades. Oh. Mid lane in trouble. There's the change around from the Shibalaki and the mid laner. Ripping Holes is having a good game. I've got to give him more credit again. He shelled early knowing that the Observer Vortex could have shredded his Vulcan. And then following that, he also peeled the Guan Yu off him again. The Bacchus is making a big Ooh. impact in this game. He doesn't look like it at level 10, normally 0 one, 3 But really, the amount of times I've seen him play and go, wow, that was good. Despair got out of there by the skin of his teeth. You see that? Just dashed right on through 3. But again, Kingdom get pushed out one by one, Gold Fury half HP. There, there is a Guan Yu around. This could be trouble, it could but it's lost. just not going to be enough. Gold Fury goes the way of Noble, despite Niquid showing up. Surprise, we don't see Noble commit onto Niquid there, but I think that's very, very disciplined from them not to oh, try yeah. and go for the kill as well. He looked like he was alone, but I guarantee you he was not. Reinforcements were on the way back and could have turned that one on his head and put Noble in a rougher spot than they needed to be. Yeah, I mean, even without the ultimate, Thor is a big threat. Down goes the wall. You separate two, two the one team into two units. You get a good double tap onto one or two players. Very troublesome situation. A lone Thor can start with just a Guan Yu on his side. So Noble Esports making the smart decision. And because of that, they're up about 5,000 gold here, 14 minutes into the game. And like I was saying, early game, Noble really got a hold of it by way of their early invades. But this mid game, a big part of what's keeping Noble Esports on top is Lou. He's only won two and three Hindu. It's not all about him taking the fights, but that's part of it. It's also him controlling the Shibalanke. It's also him getting controlled, but in terms of they have to focus him out in the team fights. Exactly. Them focusing onto the fray allows the rest of the team to make things happen for them too. The biggest issue for Kingdom, it's been the same thing since the SPL, so SCL I should say, which is objective control. But here's a fight and Truancy's in trouble. Yeah, Yo-Yo's gonna bring the Vulcan right into the crosshairs and the answer is Thor in the sky. Finds a stun, but no follow-up double tap means Yo-Yo lives to see another day. Fred's rotating mid lane for a second here, but everyone disengaged, and this seems to be the order of the day so far between teams. However, Lou, looking for a fight. Shibalake knows he's there. Lift gonna be missed, but a couple of basics coming out. Ooh, off the mark. Lou not as accurate as he's been this game. I mean, that worked out very well for the, the Jablonke there. Despair played that very well, like poisoned him, froze yep. an attack, disengaged immediately, avoided a lot of the pulse. And because he had a full minion wave there, Lou took more than what Jablonke took. <laughs> Pretty much. A lot of poke coming out, but Lou's going to head on home, finish up that demo grip, and... Again, two items, good enough this game, but once he hits that three, it'll actually be the Telkine's ring. A uh, lot of damage going to be coming out from Lou. Both mid laners as well. Doom mobs fully stacked in this game as well. Both working to very similar builds. Only difference is not much penetration on the side of Vulcan just yet, investing into the Bancrofts instead. Yeah, just straight power coming out from the Vulcan, expecting some help from uh, from other players. In fact, maybe maybe expecting uh, some other players to pick up some shred items. Do you like the adjustment from Kingdom Esports here? They have picked up a Raph on Jumper on Thor in the jungle at the moment. Obviously, Back is still not level 12 right now, but that adjustment very important for the Gold Fury Fire Giant control, which Noble completely has with two Raphs. Exactly. When it comes to there's a single Wrath on the other on the other team, I think you have options. You can control that player. You can kill them. You can maybe bait out the Wrath. When there's two separate Wraths on the other team, you almost have to respond with a Wrath of your own and a Thor coming out of the sky with a stun? Yep. I mean, what are, the better, what are the characters better for that? Well, I mean, a Raph is 1,200 damage on its own. It doesn't execute any more when it gets beyond a little threshold. It's right. 1,200 damage. But if you've got two Raphs, that's 2,400 damage. So you go three, two, one. When it gets to 2,000, right, both of your, both of your, your people <laughs> with Raph just 
use it at Boom. the same time, it's guaranteed death. So it's a bit of a response available this time around, but I would like to see Bacchus maybe take it too. But if you get landed on by a Thor at 2,000 damage, uh, 2,000 HP on the target, well, all of a sudden, now other people are getting hit on. Anyone's a game exactly. in that scenario too. But at the moment, that's the biggest issue Kingdom Esports always have is objective control. I keep saying it because we did it all through SEL, and he's showing again here. I mean, early game, I can't dis I can't be upset with them for the fact that they lost their buff invasion. No, Noble crushed them. it. That's normal, but goal for your control, still an issue. Exactly, and you know, Noble perhaps knowing that, coming into this game with that in mind, I mean, the characters they've, the characters they've, that Noble has selected don't exactly sing objective control to me, but just understanding the build path, very deep, is Noble in Kingdom's jungle, gonna chase out Thor on the backside, but three players here just located, chasing everybody away from the speed buff. But at the moment, this is fine for Kingdom. I mean, they all get out so far, and there goes in one more time, like to steal that one away. Bit of pressure onto him, but that Vulcan was on the money. Yeah, it's just gonna hit everybody involved on this fight. Speed buff going the way of Fafnir on Noble, so the invade successful. Rough. Here comes Nickwood dashing through three. Shell pop, that's gonna help, but no real fight. Nickwood puts down Yo Yo. Don't know who did that raft there, but he stopped Nickwood from fighting. Finding Yo-Yo for a second, not long enough though. Fafnir jumps over the wall to safety, but it's a one for zero between the two. And now because of this, look at this, speed buff, blue buff are available. Kingdom can strip these away. Yeah, Noble, Noble lose their jungler in essence for the speed buff on the other side, which is almost worth. But as soon as they lose the blue buff and potentially the tier one tower, then it starts to be, ouch. And that's the knock up that you get ouch. from Truancy. Knock up, stop you using abilities, which means he didn't manage to get a chance to use his ult, which means the monkey falls, as does the tower. See, Noble Esports right there, that's lack of adjustment to the game that they're playing. I feel like Noble wrote this game plan down yep. and they said, all right, we're gonna go for these invades. What is this? We're gonna do all of this. Nickwid's just leading the charge. Love Love this response of Kingdom, CC chain. so much aggression. This is the CC chain they were looking for last game and showed signs of life with it when they ran the Hebo Vulcan combo. But this time around, it's working out even better. They've just taken two towers on the right-hand side and no response. This is this is absolutely fantastic from Kingdom and exactly what you have to do. Noble let the game sort of take them away. Noble got let themselves get taken away by the game. Their, be, their early game worked out flawlessly with their invades. The mid game, the invades started to falter. You saw Kingdom respond with a couple of other successful defenses, mm -hmm. even picking up a Wrath themselves, and then Noble continuing it. At this point, you got to make a note. The invade's not coming our way, and then bam, Kingdom respond in kind, taking out a player, taking out a buff, and then two towers. The CC control is just too much from to deal with. Look how much damage he did as Frey right though, around the back. Lou gonna find poor old Truancy on his own. He's in a lot of trouble. Yeah, a couple of missed shots. Not gonna seal the deal what? for Truancy. He's still alive, but one smack to the face. That's double digits for Kingdom. Kingdom. Meanwhile, though, Nickwood going very deep, looking for the Yarnus there. Not going to find it. However, they can still pressure the tier one tower. Nickwood should fall on this right hand side. He's just keeping people busy. Yeah, I don't know about that. He's got the he's got the heels going on his way, and he should out? be safe for the moment. No, he should not be safe. That's a lie. He should, he should not be, be safe be, for the moment. Dead. No, he's good. Dashing through. All right, now he's unsafe. Meanwhile, though, Despair stays in left. Kingdom are winning this game now. I'm not joking. Look, go to the experience in gold here. Yep. This game has swung back all of a sudden. You can see the experience is now in their favor. The gold is relatively even between these two. And it's noble that on that right-hand side invading exactly. the speed buff has cost them everything. They worked so hard at the start. You more. trace this entire comeback for Kingdom back to the botched speed buff invade. Because of that play that Kingdom makes on the right side, they're able to come back in spades. Noble respond by good. getting another gold fury. That's the power of two rats, baby. I, I imagine if they didn't lose all those towers. That speed buff invade that failed, cost Ooh. them all that, made it even. They got the Gold Fury, which answers back some of that. But this is what they needed to do. They should have been grouping a little bit earlier, I feel, especially after the failed speed buff. Group up as a team. They one did in one at a time a little bit, two a little bit sporadic. Ooh. What a flop! Quad knock up and truancy responds with the bullseye shot. And now look at Freya. Freya's the target. Right on top, there's going to be some help from Relics, but another stun can't do that twice, and Jumpa certainly can. That's the kill on the Lou. And that's two kills for a tier one tower, and now you've got an army of Kingdom Esports with a Guan Yu on his way with those heals that are looking for a tier two tower now. You know, you mentioned earlier that Kingdom had some trouble with objective secure, and we have certainly seen that in this game. But what they don't have a trouble with is fighting these team fights. Shell has popped, Noble doing less damage. Not the case for Kingdom Esports. Two, two, and seven. For 
for the jungle Thor. And uh, once again, another one's going to fall down there. And now Sun Wukong forced out as well. The tower is still under aggression, and there goes the cavalry charge. And the stun going to come out as well onto the back line. Tower on the front line, taken out. Damage coming through. Liquid secures the kill, but Despair wow. the one doing all of the damage. Where do they go now, Kingdom Esports? This is where they struggle sometimes. They win a fight, and they're like not sure what to do. They're going to go for the Phoenix. Good I call. think this is wise at the moment, because Lou's still dead for a few more seconds. They can get a Phoenix here. Yeah, this is a very aggressive call. Most teams, I think, go for the tower, but because Lou the Freya is dead, go directly for the Firebird. Down it comes, and Kingdom Esports, they've trailed for 15, 20 minutes of this game off of a single misplay. Not even a misplay coming out from Noble. There's a strong stop down defense by actually, Kingdom able to swing the game in their favor. I'm putting a lot of this on Ripping Holes again. He was the one at the speed buff that actually defended it in the yep. first place. Set up the Vulcan ultimate that came in as well which turned that fight and allowed them to disengage. Noble tried to spread, got ran down. But then again in the mid lane, I'm looking at Ripping Holes. He four man hit the belly flop again on the tier one tower that then allowed Kingdom to go back in this. Bacchus is the man right now. Absolutely. 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 Very rarely do supports get their just due, but rip it all. do for me because I play it myself. I think I'm one of the only ones that really <laughs> focus on supports because I love the role. And sometimes they go very unnoticed, especially in the pro league and in pro games, because generally everyone just looks at the slash style of how you got the most kills and the least deaths. Supports don't get that luxury. Well, supports are only fun at the highest level. Supports are fun at the highest level and at the bottom level. At the bottom level, you become jungle two and you just become a bully. Pick Guan Yu or Nemesis or something and then destroy everybody. And at the high level, you get to see this type of stuff. Rippin' Holes setting up his team, setting up truancy to really just but make not everything just set up. happen. There's so many things involved in a support in terms of peel for your team to get him out of danger and then also engage for your team oh, yeah. too. And juggling that sometimes is a very difficult task. I suppose it's always been the shortest and lowest level, you know? <laughs> so shortest on gold and lowest in level as well also is one of the hardest things to do, but great game. And, and look, look at Bacchus. Because of his efforts, he's sitting up there high in the player charts, and this isn't a Bacchus that's trying to deal a lot of damage. This isn't a Bacchus that's necessarily built into a lot of damage. He has a standard Seven Bacchus gold. build. Boots of the Magi just to help him out a little bit, and then support, support, support. He just happens to be that high because of his accuracy and his commitment to the I team I am surprised fight. Noble has sat so far back here. They've got a Giannis. Why, why are they not even looking towards this goal for Fire Giant just yet, as it is being focused down. I don't see a through space and time being fired at all. Nobody's even in range in time. And now Kingdom, with a fire gen, they can fight. And Thor is certainly going to make it happen. He goes right on top of Lou. Double stun, and he's double done. Down for the count goes the Freya, and the fight still pushing upwards. Kingdom Esports, they can't decide what lane, but either way, they're going to be fine. They can relax a little bit here. They just wiped a member of the team. I would be looking at the fight Phoenix on the right-hand side, just because they've already taken the tier 2 tower down. It's on the way in here. They've got mid Phoenix down too. Let's take a second Phoenix. Take up time with it too, because Lou's going to be dead a while. I think Kingdom wanted to push up mid, and as soon as they start running to it, they go, wait, we already got that Phoenix. Let's head to the right lane. Like more than anything, they were looking to try and find an additional pick if they could, but Noble did a very good job of disengaging for now, but now they've got to try and defend against five. And see, look at what Rip and Hold is doing. He jumps forward. He's playing solo lane here almost, where he, he's just alone able to push the enemy away, allowing the rest of the squad to go ahead and take down the important objectives. Two Phoenixes down for the guys on Noble. I mean, in the moment, we call him Rip and Holes. I think he might need to change his name to Tearing Holes, because that's what I can feel after this game anyway, so far. It wasn't great in the Los Amigos set overall, this performance from Kingdom, but this is a good response for them. I mean, their heads could have dropped after those invades at the start of this game, especially after just losing both those games to Amigos, knowing that they had to win here to stay in with a shot of coming back to the SEL. Yeah, when you when you, when you you frame it like that, when you put the brackets around it into the context, incredible. Ripping holes starts peeling for his teammates on the back line. Nickwood takes Lou out on the front side. Yo-Yo with the ultimate almost offensively can't find anybody. Different story for the Bacchus. Finally, using the Intoxicate, bringing Daily Dale down low and truancy bringing them to zero this was just a beautiful game from noble i want to say it's a beautiful game from noble at the start they controlled the early pace they invaded both sides of the map they took two gold furies uncontested because of it as well and one small misstep and it was more the fact that they just didn't respect the bacchus coming in at the end of the vulcan ultimate that turned this game on its head
ahead. And from there, Kingdom managed to get the way back in and looking to win. Yeah, Mid Phoenix spawns and immediately take it out very low. And the Vulcan Oval did it. Gonna That's take him out! Red Ripper on the hair's cat end finds death thanks to the Vulcan. 10 kills up. Kingdom Esports takes the win. They're still alive. Yeah, not. Really surprising game overall, especially at the speed of how quickly that game turned, you know? We saw a good so lead quick. overall. Was so a good, quick. Like you said, about 20 minutes, about 15, 20 minutes of that yeah. game was all Noble. And then one fire speed buff, and it was just done. Yeah, yeah, you know what happened? Noble had a great plan there. Mm. They, they had the plan of the invade and, and hyper-aggression. But what happened was Kingdom responded and adjusted a little bit. So the first time, right, your first invade, let's say it's 100% success. They go ahead and do it. The second invade, Kingdom are a little bit more aware. Yep. So it goes down to 80%. And no adjustment. Still totally fine. Third invade, 60-50. Now it's a coin flip. Still goes fine. But once Kingdom, all right, look, they're going to do it again. We're going to respond with a Bacchus and a Vulcan. We know you're coming. You're down to about 30% success rate. All of a sudden, that one that one goes down, and the timing. Yo-Yo died as soon as the opportunity to push onto the enemy jungle bus was yep. there, and that was the end of the end, the beginning of the end. I don't want to see.